Today we're taking a look at three financial headlines that sort of lead us into three concepts in the economy that's going to help you understand where everything's going, what to do about it, how to land on your feet, how to help the people you care about. Credit card losses are rising at the fastest pace since the great financial crisis. These are all from CNBC and they're talking points to get us started talking about a few things I'm going to be telling you. Social security benefits may be cut by at least 20% in the next decade. European Union does not want to decouple from China but must protect itself, says EU trade chief. When you see what I've got to say about these three articles, some of the other things, I'm adding a bunch to it, adding a little bit of color. You're going to have a better understanding about the entire economic system you're dealing with right now and know what moves to make next. And by the way, the best comment beneath this video we're going to pull out and talk about in an upcoming video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Peter Leeds. And we're all about getting you profits quickly and easily. Peter Leeds, Premium Investor Enlightenment. Social security benefits are at risk for a crisis of cuts in the next decade. Oh, really? Wasn't I telling you guys about this before? That's when they should have started fixing it was then, not now. But now everybody knows about it. It's going to be a problem because they waited too long. As you guys know, this has come up for a while. I've been telling you guys about this for ages. Now it's starting to get into people's awareness. You're seeing the benefits decreased. You're going to start seeing the contributions increased. You're going to start to see the services provided declining. Since it's playing out, I'd like to show you now on the other side of things when you know what I talked about before about this and now we're on the other side of it, I'd like to show you, say, this is what I was talking about when my theory becomes an unfortunate reality. I'll do the exact same thing again once gold prices finally do what I've been expecting them to do for so long. But like I say, I was way too early on that, so it means I was still wrong. I was wrong on gold, but I do believe it's going to go up tremendously in a short window of time going forward. I don't mean within weeks, but I mean in the next few quarters and I'll do it again once real estate finally does what I've been telling you it's going to do it already came down a lot in Canada it'll happen even more it'll have and by the way Canada it's debatable but they're in a recession right now but in the states once house prices finally come down like I've been expecting for a while then we're going to talk about it again I already did it with the metaverse the altcoins and while we're on the topic let's bring up the Iraqi dinar binary options the overvalued stock markets we saw until recently. They're still overvalued now. I think there's a lot of downside ahead of us. But they're certainly not as overvalued as they were when I was most concerned about it a while back. And all this is not to mention the bond meltdown when I told you everything's going to come down together. All coins, metaverse, bonds, stocks came down. Bitcoin came down from its high around 70,000. But my most impressive call, my favorite call in recent history has been the big inflationary bounce. This is playing out. When did I first start talking about this? You guys were here. It's about a year and a half ago. The big inflationary bounce played out from what I told you a year and a half ago. It's playing out exactly right now. Social Security, all these unfunded liabilities, all of them have always been on this path. Just like the government is always on the path to run out of money. Because they never fix the problem. And they just keep reacting to this big calamity if we don't pay what we owe but then they never fix the problem they just wait till the next time because they're going to paycheck they're looking important they're being involved in something that they feel is epic and meaningful but at no point are they doing things in the way that would be best for you social security will have to reduce payments increase contributions lower services and the only way that they'll be able to exist on an ongoing basis is if they get funding from the government which means our government will have more debt on their books, which means that your share of that debt that you owe is greater. So rather than fix the problem and manage things on a fiscally responsible level, it's easier just to have a hidden way to put it on your shoulders when nobody's looking, which leaves you with only two choices. Either we pay the debts we have, which I don't think there's a mathematical way to do that, or we don't, which is a default. People always say, well, we'll just print whatever money we need to pay off the debts we have. Theoretically, yeah, that would totally be a doable thing. First of all, I don't believe that the complete destruction of a currency is a form of repayment. It's not a repayment at all. It's a destruction. It's a default. You could wind up with no governmental debt. If that were to happen, your house would be worth 14 billion dollars well you say isn't that great then aren't i wealthy at that point this exact thing is playing out some places right now venezuela being one of them 
which is why you're seeing all these people coming over the border right now from Venezuela. You cannot print your way out of debt like that. Other countries have tried it as well, and it's always gone the exact same way. The complete destruction of social order, the complete insolvency of any kind of productivity. As of August 2023, more than 7.7 million people have left Venezuela, making it one of the largest external displacement crises in the world. This is from USA Today. Increasing social security taxes put a burden on workers across a range of income levels. And it's a solution many people might end up sorely unhappy with. It's not a solution. People are going to be very unhappy, but it doesn't matter because there's nothing that anyone is going to be able to do about it. You get what they give you. And it's a good idea to gear up for the fact that social security taxes could grow even more burdensome in the coming years as lawmakers attempt to prevent cuts. They're going to have to provide fewer and fewer services. This is a 100% fact. I'm just the one telling you ahead of time. There's a wide range of estimates about when Social Security runs out of money. I've heard a whole range of them, but it's about, on average, around 2033. So in about 10 years. Just like the government today is out of money. Just like FEMA will be out of money within a few weeks. Social Security is not at all viable long term. Credit card losses are rising at the fastest pace since the great financial crisis. Goldman Sachs predicts credit card losses will continue to climb through the end of 2024 and into early 2025. What is unusual is that the losses are accelerating outside of an economic downturn, the firm said. First of all, we are in an economic downturn right now. This has not been labeled a recession yet, and when it gets here, it will be serious enough that people can't downplay it or say, well, technically this, technically that. It'll be a really hard time for everybody in this economy. Just wait for the same situation once we get into a recession. Germany is on its third quarter of a recession. I told you ages ago that there's going to be those recessions in Europe. And there's a bunch of other countries on the bubble right now that are either in or are going to be in a recession within quarters. Canada's in a recession right now. Is America next? I believe, and you guys know if you've been around, you know that I believe for sure it is. Credit card losses bottomed in September 2021, and while initial increases were likely reversals from stimulus, they've been rapidly rising since the first quarter of 2022. Since that time, it's an increasing rate of losses only seen during the recession of 2008. It's far from over, the firm predicts. Losses currently stand at 3.63%, up 1.5 percentage points from the bottom. That's a huge increase. And Goldman sees them rising another 1.3 percentage points to 4.93%. This comes at a time when Americans owe more than $1 trillion on credit cards, a record high according to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Loans have grown 22% year over year, and credit card debt reached a record high with Americans owing more than $1 trillion in the second quarter of 2023, according to the Federal Reserve data. EU does not want to decouple from China, but must protect itself, says EU trade chief. Okay, this is a big one. Listen to this. You're probably wondering what's going on. Germany and China are massive trading partners. China, in fact, is the top trading partner for Germany in terms of imports. But China, which is already slowing down, and a lot of Germany's growth over the years has come from China, and now Germany and China are having a tit-for-tat, back-and-forth, pseudo-trade war thing. The European Union has no intention to decouple from China, but needs to protect itself when its openness is abused. Bloch's executive vice president said, as both sides look to cool rising tensions over geopolitics and trade. Relations have been tense due to Beijing's ties with Moscow, after Russian forces swept into Ukraine. So what's going on here? You've probably seen it if you live in America, North America, Canada too, or in Europe. There's a lot of concerns about Chinese technology, but I don't believe it's about the technology. It's all a game where they're posturing, doing political games. There's trade wars now. This is from Reuters. China remains Germany's main trading partner for the seventh year. Trade between Germany and China rose to a record last year, making the Asian country Germany's most important trading partner for the seventh year in a row, despite political warnings of Berlin about excessive dependence. 
There's a lot of concerns that people are becoming too dependent on one country. In this case, that happens to be China. So they're trying to trade with China less, use less of China's technologies. Goods worth around 298 billion euros, which is equivalent to about 320 billion U.S. dollars, were traded between the two countries up around 21% from 2021, according to data from German Statistics Office. So do you guys see sort of what I'm bringing this to your attention for? The reason is that there's a concern here that you've got one nation here, China, which is having a financial and economic breakdown on a lot of levels all at once. Then you've got Germany, who's reliant on China as a massive, significant, significant trading partner. Germany's already in the third quarter of a recession. China is also slowing down. And when Germany is dependent on China for growth, Germany doesn't have its own growth, and then China doesn't have the growth, then that's just going to be even worse for a nation like Germany that's already in recession. So there's going to be a lot fewer BMWs sold in China going forward. But overall, China has a trade deficit of about 84 billion euros with China. Some German politicians and scientists are alarmed at the interdependence of the two countries in some areas, given their sharply different views on social and political reforms. The main problem is Germany's dependence on China for critical raw materials, which are needed for the transition to cleaner energy and transport. So what countries do when they want to protect their own interests and sort of hurt other countries. They think it'll be helpful, but it always backfires, as I always tell you. They're going to squeeze in other countries. They're going to add regulations. They're going to add excise taxes. There's going to be jawboning, the things that politicians say to the media, political posturing, and it gets into a trade war where there's different costs for different products, and they nickel and dime, and they get into all this stuff, and it never works out well. They all just feel like they're doing something. So what happens? It all leads up to... With this article I'm going to show you now, it leads up to this sort of point. This is from Indie TV World. China will not stand by idly if the German government decides to restrict the use of components from Chinese firms such as Huawei and ZTE and its 5G network, the Chinese embassy in Berlin said on Thursday. Germany's interior ministry has proposed forcing telecom operators to curb their use of equipment made by China's Huawei and ZTE after a review highlighted Germany's reliance on the two Chinese suppliers, according to a government official. If the German government really decides to move in this direction without proving that Chinese products pose a security threat to Germany, we will not stand by idly, the NBC said in an emailed statement to Reuters. But my point was I want to give you these three pillars to sort of give you an idea or give you a feel about what the economy is like right now. What can you do about it? You can be aware of all this, first of all. You educate yourself. You see what it means, and this is what we talk about on this channel, so that you land in your absolute best place, help the people that you care about. In terms of investments, there's certain things you want to be buying, things you want to be avoiding. We talk about all this on this channel. Please subscribe to the channel. Click like, and everyone says it. They say to do that, and the reason they do that is it really helps get the channel out there. You get to have your channel be put in front of the eyes of a lot more people. And I think that there's some good messages here that a lot of people need to know. I'm telling you a lot of things that no one else is saying because it's really difficult to talk about a lot of the stuff that's going on. Luckily, there's a lot of stuff you can do so that you land on your feet and actually start making money. 